Hey, welcome to Pop Culture Graveyard on the road. Hollis here coming to you live from the heartland, the pride of the flyover states, Texas, USA. We are slowly inching our way to New York from Los Angeles, and we're making good progress. We hit Suffragette City yesterday. Along the way, we found tornado shelters, rattlesnake warnings. We checked out local pandemic safety protocols and reading material of all kinds. But the thrust of this episode is that I'm going to be bringing you, quote unquote, America's largest record store. I'm talking, of course, about Josie Records here in Dallas. 15,000 square feet. It's a little misleading. A lot of that square footage is eaten up with CDs, DVDs, posters, books, and even a stage where bands can perform. Overall, I have to say, I was very impressed by the cool people that work there, by the way the store is laid out, and the gut feeling that if I had a week to go through every record, I'd come away with some really high quality stuff. So please join me as I try to find some value in America's largest record store. Don't tell Amoeba. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank my latest patron, Thank you, Alfred. I greatly appreciate your patronage, Mr. Kalamusa, and I couldn't do the show without you. If you're enjoying the content that I'm bringing you from week to week and would like to help support the show, please consider joining my Patreon. It's at patreon.com forward slash popculturegraveyard. And thanks. So Josie Records is a very big record store. So big, in fact, that we had a little trouble finding the door because it just kept going and going and going and going. But once you get inside, it looks basically like an airplane hangar. Racks and racks everywhere. There's rock and pop, there's jazz, there's one and two dollar records. Of course, you know you're in Texas because it has an entire blood rock section and local color pops out at you everywhere in the form of records like Orion Country, that masked man who was not Elvis, but almost as interesting. And it even had obscure stuff like Biff Rose, who you might know thanks to David Bowie covering his song, Fill Your Heart, on the Hunky Dory album. At one point I went to use the bathroom, and as I was finishing up, I zipped up my pants, and I had this weird feeling that I was being watched. I slowly turned around, and this is what greeted me. Any record store where a decked out prince watches you urinate is just a little bit better than other record stores. It took me a while to find my bearings, but once I found the 80s slash new wave section, I knew I was going to do okay. And that's where I got the bulk of the albums I'm going to be showing you. First up, Wire, Snake Drill. This is still in the shrink wrap. It is on Enigma Records. As you can see, it still has that great Enigma inner sleeve that they were doing for a while, plastic. This release is from 1986, and it sees Wire after they took five years off. And when Wire came back with this album, Snake Drill, it was a much heavier sound, almost industrial, but very, very interesting, very, very cool. And I got it for nine bucks. Still has the hype sticker on it. As I say, it's a heavier sound, more keyboards than guitars. It is a four song mini EP. And I'm going to tell you the truth here. You cannot go wrong with Wire. They are a great band and they did not put out any bad material. Next up, Jonah Louie. On the other hand, there's a fist. This is a very clever, quirky album by a very clever, quirky artist. Jonah Louie was on the Stiff label. This album is put out by Stiff America. And the lead song on this album is one that I loved as a kid when I first heard it on WLIR. You'll always find me in the kitchen at parties. I love the sentiment, but the song itself is so expertly done. It has a lot in common with Ian Dury and the Blockheads. It smacks of their best work, and it's just a really lovely, laconic song. And he's got this wonderful, apathetic way of singing. This came out in 1980 on Stiff America, and I'll put a link to You'll Always Find Me in the Kitchen at Parties, because you should hear it. It's really clever. But check this out. It came with two sheets. One of them is the credits, and it tells all the musicians and singers on every track. You'll Always Find Me in the Kitchen at Parties has backing vocals by Kirsty McCall, who you may know from the song Fairy Tale of New York by the Pogues. She sings the female part in that song. The other sheet it comes with is a Stiff America promotional sheet 
And it says, selected by shoplifters, ignored by intellectuals. And it shows all the newest releases on Stiff America. Not just Jonah Louie, but the Plasmatics, Ian Dury and the Blockheads, the Feelies Crazy Rhythms album, Desmond Decker, and more. And the back of that promotional sheet is the order form for t-shirts, enamel pins, buttons, patches, posters, and more, where you can buy different swag by your favorite bands, Lena Lovitch, The Clash, Madness, or even shirts emblazoned with the Stiff logo. If it ain't stiff, it ain't worth a fuck. Up next, I found a 12-inch promotional copy of The Waitress's Bruiseology on side A and Make the Weather on side B. The hype sticker says two new hits from The Waitress's new album, Bruiseology. I got this for $8, and if you know anything about The Waitresses, you know that Bruiseology is a very, very hard album to find. So I was very happy to get this, what I consider to be the two best songs on the album. But the whole album is great. Everything The Waitresses put out is great. I love Patty Donahue's vocals, but I also love the drumming on The Waitresses albums. The drums are played by Billy Ficka. Yes, that Billy Ficka from television. All of the musicians that play on this are top-notch, and I'm very happy to find this one. Up next, for five bucks, Burning Sensations. This is a promotional copy, and the Burning Sensations, you may know, they did one of these songs on the Repo Man soundtrack. They did a cover of Pablo Picasso by Jonathan Richmond, and it plays during the scene where Emilio Estevez picks up the girl who would later become his girlfriend. Anyway, this was recorded in 1983, and it was mixed by Dave Jordan. You may know the name Dave Jordan from all of his work with Jane's Addiction. Burning Sensations are a very keyboard-oriented band who did some really interesting electronic work. There's only four songs on this album, but they really stretch out and they're a lot of fun. This band didn't last long, maybe about four years or so, and they had one MTV hit, Belly of the Whale, which you might know. The leader of Burning Sensations, Tim McGovern, used to be in the motels, but don't hold that against him. This is a very cool album. Speaking of a really cool keyboard band, Boom! Units, New Way to Move. This album cost me five bucks. Units made their name in San Francisco. They were known as sort of synth punks. And one of my favorite possessions is their High Pressure Days EP, which is a seven inch, which is an amazing release. Their 1980 full length digital stimulation goes for an awful lot of money. This release is from 1983, and it still finds them in great form. Anyway, this album is also a promo. I don't know why most of the stuff I gravitated towards in the store wound up being a promo. Not only does it have the album, for some reason it came with a poster of John Lennon at the piano. It's a bonus. I'm gonna see if my Imagine album has its poster. Anyway, units on this album are Scott Reiser, Rachel Weber, David Allen Jr., and Jabari Allen. And they all are on synthesizer and vocals. The additional musician on this album is Bill Nelson. Yes, that Bill Nelson from Bebop Deluxe. Anyway, units are a very underrated synth pop band, and you should check them out. Up next, for seven bucks, Cash Cows, an album for the price of a single. This is a compilation distributed through Polygram and put out through Virgin and Dindisc, and it has a wonderfully eclectic batch of music on it. It has Respectable Street by XTC, The Black Hit of Space by The Human League, Ain't That Peculiar by Japan, A Song from Under the Floorboards by Magazine, The Misunderstanding by Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, Hothead by Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, Suburban Dream by Martha and the Muffins, and a lot more. I love getting bang for the buck when I go to a music store. This is a Canadian release. It's in fantastic shape, and I was very happy to get it. To see the full episode of Pop Culture Graveyard, please join my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash popculturegraveyard, or click above for more free content.